a full list of materials used in this project, check out the description below and click on show more. There's some other good stuff down there, so you want to make sure you check it out. Okay, when you are ready to dive into all of these lovely flowers, you're going to need a few things. Um, you're going to need some 11 -0 seed beads, as well as 15 O's, and some 6 millimeter pearls and some 4 millimeter pearls. We're also going to be using some other colors of the 11 and 15, um, as well as bring in some of our 4 millimeter uh, bicones here. But to start out, the first step, we are only going to need these four items here. So we've got our pearls and your first color of the 11 O's and your first color or your color A of the 15 O's. I've got quite a few of these beautiful little flowers here and I want a bunch of them because I'm going to put them together to, um, to link them together and to create that beautiful front part of the necklace. I do also want an odd number because I want one in the center. So I have six of these and I'm going to need one more to make my odd number to make my seventh. So I'm going to walk you through that one right now. The first thing we're going to do is pick up an 11 -0. And you can also use this as your stop bead. So take your needle and thread and just go through that bead again. And that should just kind of hold your thread in place and prevent your beads from falling off as you work. You don't need to leave much of a tail since I'm only going to use this to tie off my thread at the end. So just a couple inches or so should be sufficient pick up a four millimeter pearl and then another seed bead. And we're going to continue to pick up all of our pearls with a seed bead in between. So continue picking up the seed bead and the pearl, seed bead pearl, until you have five pearls and five seed beads. So you can see here, I've got my stop bead at one end, oops, and I have my fifth pearl here at the end. Go ahead and bring your needle back through that stop bead, and as you do that, you'll see that all of your beads will come together into a circle. pass through all of the beads again, all the beads in that circle. So you're going through all of your seed beads as well as the pearls. And this will just give you a nice strong foundation for the rest of the design as you work off of this center. So if I flip this component over here, you can see this is what we're creating now this center section here that will then um, be the center and the base for all the rest of, of our lovely design. Pass through one of the 15 O's, or sorry, these are 11's, they're still working with just our 11's, so pass through one of those 11's we're going to pick up one of our seed beads, our 11 O's, and then one of our pearls. Pick up three 11 O's, and we're going to go back down through that pearl, and as we do this, you'll pull tight so you make sure you don't have any slack in your thread. And then you want these three 11 O's on the other side to kind of sit in a little triangle. So you have two on one side and then you have your center 11 O will be kind of sticking up there. Pick up one more 11 O. And we're gonna go back through the same 11 O that we first started when we first started um, making this section here. 
So go through that 11O that's sitting between the pearls. And you want to go through in such a way that now you've got three seed beads on either side of your pearl and they both are forming that little triangle. So just for reference, as I move forward here, um, I'll probably refer to these as the 11 O's in that triangle, and that will just give you um, an idea of which beads I'm talking about if I refer to that. Those beads in the triangle are these, uh, these sets of three beads here. So I'm coming out of the center bead here, the bead that is sitting between the pearls. And I'm going to go up through the next 11 o And now I'm going to pick up six more 11 o's. Pass through the 11 o which is the mirror image or the opposite. It's the same 11 o that I'm coming out of, but just on the other side of the pearl. So it's the same 11 o in that triangle just on the other side of the pearl. And pass through that 11 o Pass through the center bead. And down through the bead on the other side of the triangle. So we've gone through all three of those beads. Pick up another six 11 o's. and down through the 11 o on the other side of the triangle here at the base. And we're gonna go through that center 11 o in the triangle, the one, the center 11 o at the base here of your pearl will always be that one that's sitting between the pearls. So I'll pass through that bead. And through the next 11 o So again, we've gone through all three of those beads in that triangle. Now I'm going to start to embellish with my 15 o's. So coming out of the beads in the triangle here, I'm going to pick up a series of eight of my 15 o's. So once you've got those eight 15 o's on your needle, you're going to just jump over the six seed beads that you just added. And again, you're gonna pass through the beads in the triangle at the top. So pass through all three of those beads. And then, and then once you've gone through those three beads, we're gonna pick up another eight of our 15 O's. And pass through the first and the second bead in the triangle at the base. So again, we're just skipping over the six seed beads on the side here. And you can see my 15 O layer is going to sit right above the 11 O layer going through the first 11 o and then the second o a second <laughs> the second 11 o which is also the center 11 o and now after i've done that and i've added my 15 o's i'm ready to move on through the next through the next pearl and the next 11 o and at this point we're in position to begin adding another petal or another uh, another six millimeter bead. So each one of these six millimeter beads will be added to all of the 11 O's that we have around the base. Go ahead and complete um, or finish adding all of those petals and then we will move on and move on to the next step. After adding all of your six millimeter pearls, you should have a flower that looks like this. So you can see it already looks a lot like our finished product. It already looks a lot like this flower. 
but it's just been missing some of the embellishment and some of the um, building up that we do here in the center and around the edges. So the next thing I'm going to do here is add the center. And you can see here on my sample, um, the center here. Uh, I like having it, uh, I like selecting a color that really looks like a flower, having a nice bright um, yellow or orangey center there. Um, but you can take a look at some flowers that you're trying to mimic and see what they look like. Sometimes uh, you may want to do a sunflower with some beautiful yellow and a brown in the center um, or something different, just completely made up. Um, I want this to look kind of natural, um, as natural as I can get it to look in beads. So I've decided to go with this nice opaque squash color. And because I'm using such a little bit of it, it adds just the right little pop of color right where I want it. So here I am coming out of one of my 11 O's. This is the 11 O that is sitting between my pearls in the center. And I'm gonna start adding uh, with a little bit of a netting uh, some of my uh, secondary or my color B 15 O's and my 11 O's. So you can see here I have them I have them going around the center here. Um, they're not going to be extremely visible. The color, the 11 color that you pick will be visible. The color here for your secondary um, secondary color 15 isn't as visible, but I still want it to blend and to look nice. I'm going to pick up three of these 15 O's and then one of my 11 O and another, and another three 15 O's. And I'm going to pass through the next 11 O sitting between the, the small four millimeter pearls. So that will span be, uh, across that pearl. And then I'm going to go up through the three 15 O's on the side. So I'm going to share those 15 O's and give it a little pull just to make sure everything's nice and tight, no any slack. Pick up an 11 O and another three of my 15 O's and pass through the next 11 O. Up through the three 15 O's and I'm going from my purple pearl so that I'm then coming out at the center here. Pick up another 11 O and another three 15s through the next, through the next 11 O. And you can start to see that this is forming a nice little uh, cage sort of or outline around the pearls. And I'm getting all of my 11 O's in that nice bright color at the center. Pass through the three 15 O's. Pick up one 11 and another three 15 O's. And then through the next 11 O. So at this point here, I have 15 O's coming out of um, both 11 O's here on either side of the pearl where I'm working. So I'm going to go up through those 15 O's just like I normally would, like I have in all the other, around all the other pearls. And I'm going to pick up my last 11 O, and then I'm going to go down through the 15 O's sitting right above the next 11 O. And pass through that 11 O. And now this completes the little bit of netting here that I did, um, that I'm gonna do here at the center. I'm going to take my needle and go through the 11 O, or through the 15 O's to bring me out at the center 
so that I'm coming out next to the 11 O's going around the center here. And I'm gonna run through all of those 11 O's once, um, once or twice. And that will kind of cinch it up and make sure that this center is nice and stable, pull it all together, and just create a much nicer, tighter design. I'm just passing through all of these 11 O's. This will pull them towards the center and hold them there. After finishing the center section here, we're going to continue working off of the center section and adding a little bit more dimension to each flower. So you can see here, I have uh, some other 15 O's here that are going around and building the center up a little bit. So we're gonna work on that now. Coming out of the uh, 11 O here in the center, I'm going to pick up four 15 O's. This can be the same color that you use to go around your six millimeter pearl, or you can use a contrasting color like I have. So coming out, I'm coming out on the left side of my 11 ounce. So I'm just gonna go to the closest pearl and to the closest set of 15 O's going around that pearl. And I'm going to just pass through those 15 O's. And by doing so, I'll connect the 15 O's I just added to the set of 15 O's, the set of eight 15 O's that are already running around my pearl. And I'm gonna pass through all of those 15 O's. And I'm gonna pass through a little triangle of 11 O's at the top here. Down through the 15 O's, through the eight 15 O's that I have around my pearl. And now coming out of those 15 O's, I'm gonna pick up another set of four 15 O's in a contrasting color and pass through the next 11 O. And so I'm going through this 11 O and when I come out through the 11 O, I should be in the exact same position that I was when I started on this petal here, but just on the next petal. So you're gonna follow these steps and go around the whole flower, embellishing each petal here with those sets of four 15 O's. And then once you've got that done, we'll move on and we'll move on to the next step. After finishing adding the um, embellishment here of the, fifth, of the 15 O's to each of the petals, we're ready for the next step, which will be the final step in making the um, the component here, the flower component itself. Coming out of the center 11 out here, I'm just gonna take my needle and thread and go through all the 15 O's around the side of the petal. So I'm passing through the four of the contrasting color and then the eight of the original color there. And then I'm gonna to flip to the back side of my project. And I'm gonna pass through, staying on the same side of the petal, I'm gonna pass through the first two 11 O's that are sitting directly under the 15 O's that I just passed through. So I'm going through those two 11 O's, and then my thread should be facing this empty gap, this empty space between the petals. I'm gonna pick up one of my 15, or one of my 11 O's, my bicone, and then another 11 O. So for this step here, I've gone back to my original color, my A color of my seed bead um, in the 11 O, as well as the 15 O, I have the original color of that out. And then I also have my bicones, and I only need five bicones per component. So I've added here my, my 11 O, my bicone, and my 11 O. And I'm gonna pass through the two last 
seed beads here, the two last 11 O's on the petal directly next to where the petal that I'm coming out of here. So I'm going through the same two seed beads just on the other petal here. The two um, seed beads right before that set of three, that little um, triangle there at the end. So now I'm gonna pass over that triangle. I'm not gonna go through it. I'm gonna pick up a couple of my 15 O's. And you can pick up uh, two 15 O's, you may need to pick up three 15 O's. Um, this is just really to cover your thread. So whatever works for you. Um, I found that two is gonna work for me for this. So I'm picking up two of those uh, 15 O's and I'm gonna skip over that little triangle of seed beads and go through the first two 11 O's. And again, here I've got one 11 O, one bicone, and one 11 O. Go to the next petal and pass through those two seed beads. I'm picking up another couple 15 O's here just to hide my thread. Skip over the triangle and through the next two seed beads, those first two seed beads. So now go ahead and finish here um, with the same pattern, just adding the 11 O bicone and 11 O between all of your petals. And then we'll be ready to tie this off and incorporate this in with the rest of our components. I finished my uh, last component here. And so all I did, once I went through, uh, went around the edges here, adding all my crystals, was I just tied off any of my loose string. I went around, just reinforced it, I ran through those beads once more, and then just tied them off. So I didn't do anything special here, um, just what I would normally do to finish off a bead weaving piece. So here's my last component, and as you can see, I went ahead and got started um, at connecting the other components. So you can see this is how it's going to look, and I have six of my components connected. This is my last one, so I'm just gonna add that guy to the end here, and I will show you now how to do that. When you're ready to connect your pieces together, you're going to use a couple of your four millimeter pearls, as well as some 11 O seed beads. And I'm just using the color that I used for the base of my project. So use my A color seed bead here. I'm going to take what I've got started here and I'm going to add this last component. So if you're just starting out here and you're adding two components together, you're just gonna line them up. I'm gonna start here by going through the two seed beads that I was using on my last step when I was finishing up the component here. So I'm passing through the two seed beads, the two 11 O's on either side of the 15 O's on the back side of my component. And you're just gonna pass through those two seed beads and you're gonna pick up an 11 O, two 11 O's actually, so you're gonna pick up two 11 O's, one of your four millimeter pearls, and then another, oops, he's very anxious to be part of my project. Uh, and then you're gonna pick up another two 11 O's. So I have two 11 O's, a pearl, and two 11 O's. And I'm gonna align this so that these two components are mirror images of each other. And that way I know that they're aligned. And then I'm going to connect to the same location on the other component here that I'm attaching it to. So I'm going to pass through those two seed beads on either side or on the side here of the two 15 O's that I added at the bottom of my, of my piece. So I'm just passing through those two 11 O's. And you can see that we'll start to connect them. Coming out of those two 11 O's, I'm just gonna pick up one more 11 O, and I'm gonna skip an 11 O, and then I'm gonna pass through the 11 O, the pearl,
pearl and the next 11 out and pull that tight so that now I've got all my thread getting pulled nice and tight together here. Pick up one more 11 out and on the side here where we started on this first component, we'll pass back through the first two seed beads. And this will sort of complete that circle or that, that step there. So I've now attached this side to this side with some seed beads and a pearl. I'm gonna go back through these seed beads and the pearl again because this is a connection point and so I want to reinforce this and make sure that I've got uh, it nice and strong. So I'm going to reinforce this and to reinforce it all I'm doing is following that thread path back through the beads. Oops. Through my pearl here, through the 11, and through the next 11. So here I've completed my first connection. And so now I'm gonna do a second connection here on the other corner, the other edge here, where they're going to connect. Taking my threaded needle, I'm gonna pass through the 11, the bicone, and the 11 and through the next two beads as well. And those will be the two beads that I want to use for my connection. I'm gonna pick up two seed beads and one of my pearls and another two seed beads. And I can let all those fall down. And let me turn this here. And then I'm gonna pass through the same two seed beads here on the other side. Pick up another 11 out. And skip the first 11 out and pass through just the 11 out pearl and 11 out there in the center of that connection. I'm gonna pick up one more 11 out and pass those two seed beads again, those two seed beads that are on my, uh, on my other component here on the other side. And like I just did on the other side, again, go through and reinforce this. It's very loose at first because it's a little tricky to do, um, to get this all connected. So the first time you pass through and you add all your beads, it's probably not going to be very tight. That's why I like to go through here and really reinforce this, partly because it is holding your whole piece together, so you wanna make sure that it's a nice, strong connection, and it also then gives me the ability to go through and tighten it up because it is very difficult to get tight the first time. So now that I've got that connected, I'm gonna pass through my seed bead, my bicone and my seed bead. And you should be back to the beginning here where your thread tail or your tail thread was. So if you wanna go ahead and just tie these two threads together, that's a perfect place to to do that and then to cut and burn down your threads. So for all of these sections here, you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to line them up and this is the back side here. So you're just going to line them up and connect them so that you end up forming a nice U shape. Once you've attached all of your components together, we're gonna make the rest of the necklace going up the back towards our clasp in a basic stringing fashion. I've got a new length of thread here, and the thread that I have is at least three times the length that I need to do this piece of the project. 
So you want to measure from the end of your um, of your center section here with all the components to back to where you would want your clasp to be and whatever length that is you want to make sure that you're picking or you're cutting yourself uh, about three times that length and that should give you plenty to work with. So I'm going to start here on the very end and I'm going to go through the two uh, 15 O's on the back here and through the 11 O uh, on the front here. So the 11 O here is at the very end, the very tip of the project. And I'm gonna go through the 15 O's on the back again. And this is just giving me a good anchor so that my whole project isn't just uh, connected at this one tiny little point at that one 11 O. So I've gone through the 15 O's in the back and through my 11 in the front and then I'm going to go back through that 11 and that's where I want to be coming out through that 11 at the very tip on the very edge of my last component here and that's where I'm going to begin stringing my beads. So to, um, the beads that I've selected for stringing are going to be the beads that are um, left over from my strands of pearls and my 15 or my 11 OC beads here. So I've got my six millimeter pearls as well as my four millimeter pearls and I'm doing a very uh, basic pattern here and using my 11 O's as spacers. So coming out of this 11 O, I'm going to pick up one more 11 O and then I'm going to begin my basic stringing pattern. Whichever pattern um, I want to use is fine, uh, but I like adding these little 11 O's in between. It adds a nice lightness and it helps to bring more of that color into the uh, stringing portion of your, of your necklace. And I like to keep the colors somewhat in proportion, so I like using more of the purple than of the yellow. And so a simple little stringing pattern like this of a few purple and one yellow should go very well with the rest of the necklace and keep that all in balance color-wise. I'm going to continue to string here until I get to the length that I need on this side of my bracelet or my necklace and then I will um, once I get to the end there I'm going to attach a clasp and the clasp that I've chosen to use is a cup button so I'll go ahead and string this to the length that I need and then I will show you how to add the clasp. After finishing the basic stringing portion here we're going to add one side of our clasp and because I'm using a cup button that will either be my cut button or it will be the loop for my cut button. Uh, some people prefer to have the button on one side or the other. So you just want to think about when you are putting the jewelry on for yourself, which hand if it is um, more comfortable for you to hold the button in the right or the left hand. Um, so what I do is I kind of imagine putting this on behind the back of my neck and I think, okay, what button, <laughs> what side do I want the button on? Um, so you want to kind of have that determined before you add the button just so that um, if you choose the wrong one, you're not, uh, you're not disappointed later and don't want to have to fix it later. Uh, because this is a not a reversible necklace, it becomes a little bit more important to think about things like that. So now that you have determined, if you have determined, uh, what side you want your button on and what side you want the loop on, you're going to go ahead and add that clasp to the end here. I'm going to put my button on this side. So I've ended with one of my small beads and I'm going to pick up a couple of my seed beads and just go through that button so that I'm coming out on the side that is concave here. And I'm going to pick up a couple seed beads 
just to add a little embellishment. Um, you can also add one of your pearls if you'd like. You can see how this looks like. You can also add a pearl in there if you want it to have a little bit more embellishment. Uh, I think I'm going to stick to the seed beads. I like the look of the seed beads in there. Pick up a couple of those. And then you're going to go back down through the other hole in your button. We're going to pick up another two seed beads. And then we're going to go back through all of these beads. So we're going to back through all these beads in the strung portion here. And take your time when you do this. You don't want to go too fast because you want to make sure that you are going through all of them and you're not accidentally skipping over any of the seed beads. They can be really easy to skip over. So earlier I had said you want uh, about three times the length of the stringing portion. Um, you actually want about four, so I need to correct that. You actually need about four because you do want to be able to go through this uh, twice back and forth. So that's about uh, four times the length and then you want to add um, a little for your uh, thread tail and whatever you're going to need at the end to tie off. So four plus uh, you know, a few inches. You really only need to go through it twice, but I like to add that extra length because I like to go back through it again because that's the way that I'm going to reinforce the cup button as well as just make sure that I get this um, really nice and tight so that I don't have any slack. And of course, because this is basic stringing and this is going to be what's holding your um, the rest of the necklace on. You don't want to skimp on um, any of the um, structural integrity or uh, you know the, the ability for this to hold your project. So now coming out of the last bead here, my last pearl, I'm going to pick up another 11 -0 and I'm going to go through that center 11 -0 that center 11 -0 there on that little triangle there of beads that was uh, attached to my component. And so now I've got my one bead here that I'm sharing and two seed beads on either side. So it's a mirror image here. And I'm going to go back through here again and reinforce this. So all I'm doing on this pass through is back and forth. I'm going to go through all my beads and up through my clasp again and back down. And then once I come back down here, I'm going to show you how I tie this off. I've now gone back through my beads again and reinforced it. And my thread is now coming out of my last pearl here. So I'm going to take my thread needle down through one of those 11 O's on the side and again through that 11 O at the center of that little pyramid of beads and now I'm going to move to the back side of my project and I'm going to take my needle through the two 15 O's here remember at the beginning I took my needle through those 15 O's And I'm just going to reinforce this by going through that 11 0 and those 15 0s again. And at this point now, my thread, uh, both my thread ends are together, and I can just simply do a little overhand knot, do this a couple times, 
uh, make a square knot if you know how to do square knot, just right over left, left over right, and then I can cut and burn that down. And then once I've done that, I will be done with this side. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same steps on the other end here, and then I will show you how to add the loop for our button and also how to make it adjustable if you would like to make an adjustable necklace. I've strung the second side of my brace of my necklace with this um, same pattern here and to the same length. I also have added 28 seed beads after my last bead, which was my pearl here. And this is going to be the loop that I create for my button. So here I've got my 28 seed beads after my last bead of my stringing portion. I'm going to just take these beads, take my needle and thread and go back through the last beads here of my, of my necklace. And then holding that tight, you just want to make sure that this is going to be a good size for you. Sometimes depending on which beads you're using, you may need um, 26, you may need 30, um, but 20 usually is just about right. Um, so I'm going to stick with that 28, and I'm going to go back down and come back up again here. So just like we did on the other side, going back through all of these beads to get some more thread here running through the beads, and this will make it stronger. So I'm going to continue here, go through the beads, and just like I did on the other side, make sure that it's tight as you go. Um, and when I say tight, what I mean is make sure that um, you don't have any slack. So you want it to be very flexible, and that's one reason why I do really enjoy straying with something like a beading thread, like a dragon thread, um, even though it's not necessarily meant for stringing. Uh, it works really well as long as you've got the right beads and you go through a couple times so that you do reinforce it. Um, it just has a wonderful uh, draping effect. It's not stiff at all uh, and I just love the way that that feels. So I've gone through all the beads here. I'm just gonna make sure that I don't get rid of any slack that I have here by giving it a nice pull, a nice tug here. And of course, I also have my stop thread there, my th tail thread. So I can also give that a pull and tighten it up. I'm going to pick up another 11 now. And just like I did on the other side, go through the 11 now at the center of that little triangle there. And go back up through my 11 now and all the other beads here. So I'm going to go to the end. And I have just enough thread here to do three passes. So I'm going to take my thread up at the end here, and then I'm going to tie it off towards the end. Um, and I'll show you how I do that. I'm probably going to uh, use one of these beads here as a stop bead so that I'm not actually tying it around any of the thread that's going through the beads. Because if you tie it, um, if you tie it to any of the thread that's going that's running through your beads, uh, you're not actually really anchoring it to anything and your thread or your little knot can just kind of travel through the piece. So if you don't have, if you don't originally cut enough thread to uh, pass through an even number of times and come back to your, um, your base here or your component, and you want to have a nice place to tie off your thread. You want to go through one of your 15, one of your 11 O's, and pass through it again. So you just kind of create it like a stop bead. And now at this point, now that I've got my thread around that 11 O, now I can go under the thread between the beads and tie that off but you don't want to do that unless you've actually created a stop bead there. Otherwise, like I said, your, um, 
your little knot that you've created is just going to travel um, in your project and you don't want that. So here I am at the end. And so at this point, I am pretty much done. Um, and I can call it quits here and be done with it. Um, but I'm also going to show you how to add another loop to this in case you do want to make this adjustable. If you want to make an adjustable ending to a cut button clasp, you're going to start off here with just your basic loop. And you're going to build off of this loop. I'm starting with a new piece of thread and I'm going to go through my entire loop of beads and I'm just making my stop bead that first bead. Just taking my thread and going through all of these beads. I like to reinforce it before I add on to it. Uh, reinforcing it, of course, is always a good idea because it's what's going to hold the entire piece to your neck. So it's always a great idea to reinforce it. So I'm going through all these beads. And don't worry about the pearl there, just keep on going. And then this um, loop here is 28 beads. So I'm going to pass through about half of them. And you can count or you cannot count. It doesn't really matter a whole lot, except that you want to make sure that you are coming out at the end through the center beads here. You just want to come out so that you are now somewhat towards the center of your loop of seed beads here. And I'm going to pick up, I'm going to then build off of this. So I actually want to overshoot the center. So my center is right about here. So I've actually gone one bead over. And I'm going to pick up another 26 beads. If I needed 28 in this um, loop here, I'm only going to need about 26 um, in this one that I'm picking up. So about 28 and then about 26 for the secondary loop. about 15 here. So now I've got about 26. And then I'm going to pass through the two, through two beads from my first loop. And so you can see the 26 plus the two here that I'm sharing with the loop, that's that loop of 28. And I'm gonna go back through here again, just pass through all the beads of my loop. Again, just to reinforce this and also to make sure that I get everything um, close together. Sometimes when you pass through something, it will be uh, very loose passing through the first time and so then passing through a second or third time will just help pull everything closer together and prevent it from being loose. So I'm going through these beads again. And of course you always want to test this as well just to make sure that this is going to work for your clasp. So here I've got now an extension of two. I can of course add an extension with three if I want and keep going um, and make that extension as long as you think you may need it depending on um, who you're going to give it to or what lengths you like to wear. A lot of times I'll have a necklace that um, I'll make it the shortest that I ever want to wear it and then I'll add an extension to the longest that I think I'm ever going to wear it. 
and then that will give me options in between so that depending on what shirt I'm wearing um, or if, <laughs> if somebody borrows it from me and they're not the same size as I am, uh, then we both have options and it works for both of us. So I'm going to just, uh, well first I'm gonna untangle this because when I wasn't looking, this got tangled. A little sneaky, sneaky guy over here. So I'm gonna untangle that, got that untangled. And um, then I'm gonna come back to the beginning here where I started, come back to my tail thread, and then I can tie this off. You can also add a little charm or um, you can sometimes do a little pico trim on the end here and that's a nice way to end it so that it doesn't um, look, um, so that it just has like a nice little ending on it and it looks like you put a little bit more thought into it um, than I did just now. <laughs> I might actually go back and add a little pico trim. Um, I might add a little bead towards at the end, especially since I have some of my, uh, some of these little four millimeters that might be cute hanging off the end there. Or if you like wire working, you can always use something like a head pen and make a little charm and hang that off the end. So here I am here, and I've got all my thread tucked in now um, and tied off. I'm just going to trim that and burn it down. And you can see here now at the end of your necklace, you can have it short, or you can move it down a little bit. And this gives you maybe another half inch to an inch or so. So you just wanna think about um, how long you're gonna need it and or how many lanes you'd like to adjust it and then add that many loops to the end of your clasp there. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts on the project. If you're also interested in more uh, tutorials just like this one, click on that subscribe button so that you're notified as soon as we have new videos available.